Very pleased to have with us on the show from the Weekly Standard, Mr. Michael Warren. Michael, how are you doing this evening? Great. How are you, sir? Great. Thanks for uh, coming on the program. You know, it's very interesting what's going on in Indiana. Uh, Richard Murdoch uh, surging in polls over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and now, is he in the lead against uh, uh, the incumbent, Dick Luger? Uh, well, you know, it's actually difficult to say. There hasn't been a lot of good polling of this race, unfortunately, for political reporters like myself. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I have to sort of look at what uh, what the actions of, it, of the, both campaigns are. And there's a new poll out today that uh, a group uh, commission, that's a group that uh, of, of pro-labor Republicans that is supporting Dick Luger, uh, that finds Dick Luger uh, ahead by two points over Murdoch, 44 percent to 42 percent. Uh, but, uh, they, and, and again, this is less than a week before the race. Um, that's not a really great position for Dick Luger to be in for uh, 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 for re-election. Uh, and, and so what that tells me is that, uh, is a lot of what the, the Murdoch campaign is telling me as well, which is that, uh, Murdoch has uh, a lot of momentum going in, into this last week, and it's going to be close. And, and, and Murdoch could actually uh, do it and, and, and topple uh, a Hoosier state institution like Dick Luger. You know, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I know that you talk about this in the Weekly Standard. Uh, Sarah Palin has uh, endorsed Mr. Murdoch. Uh, the NRA, which oftentimes, uh, most often, does not get involved in primary elections, uh, did endorse Richard Murdoch over the F rated uh, Dick Luger in the primaries. Perhaps that's not surprising. But, uh, oh. you, you know, what what what's interesting here is nationally we've seen a lot of talk about oh is the is the Tea Party over uh, Michael does the Tea Party have any influence anymore Well you know I, I don't know if you want to call it Tea Party specific in Indiana but it certainly seems as if the uh, the grassroots uh, is is very motivated right now in Indiana I think so I think this race and to actually to a larger extent the the race that's going on in Wisconsin uh, the the recall uh, election. Uh, for Scott Walker, I mean, these are sort of the first two uh, electoral examples that we can look at and engage whether or not the Tea Party. And, and I think uh, it's uh, the lines are blurred between the Tea Party and sort of grassroots conservatives. Uh, they're just a lot of the same people. Um, but we're, I think we can see whether or not the momentum and the strength that those groups had in 2010, if that's carrying over uh, to 2012. So. I do think that this this Luger Murdoch race, when the Tea Party has come out very strongly for, for Murdoch, Dick Luger told me last week that uh, not all the Tea Party groups uh, are supporting Murdoch, but a, a large number of them, and he's got sort of the national uh, Tea Party movement behind him as well. Um, look, this is this is uh, turning out to be a little bit of a proxy race uh, uh, between those two factions, sort of the more establishment Republican, uh, certainly more Washington establishment Republican, and Dick Luger. Uh, and somebody who's uh, uh, who, who says, you know, Washington establishment Republicanism spends too much money and uh, and and it doesn't represent conservatism the way that the rest of us do, and, and they have a candidate in, uh, in excuse me, in uh, Richard Murdoch. So uh, I think it's I think time will tell, but uh, the fact that Murdoch is doing so well against against Luger uh, seems to tell me that the Tea Party is is around and alive and well. Uh, all right. So, in the last week here before the uh, the primary election, which takes place uh, next Tuesday, uh, do you think, Michael, that this is going to be neck and neck all the way to the end? Do you see will uh, do you think we'll see some undecided start to break one way or the other? And uh, I mean, how do you see this last week playing out? Yeah, uh, it's it's difficult to say. I do think it's going to be uh, there's going to be a sizable. Most of the polls I've seen recently, about fifteen percent, give or take a few, uh, remain undecided. This is actually, I think, could work to Luger's advantage if if these people decide at the last minute. Luger is a name that's well known. He's won uh, elections. He, he won statewide elections in Indiana six times now. Um, if there's any sort of sense that, you know, uh, I'm going into the voting booth uh, next Tuesday in Indiana and I don't know who to vote for, you know, my default might be to go with the name that I know uh, if I really just don't know. But on the other hand, uh, Richard Murdoch has, has got a lot of momentum. He's got a lot of ads up uh, in in uh, markets, not just Indianapolis, but other markets across the state. And uh, the, the the ads from the Luger campaign and and from uh, Luger's surrogates uh, have been pretty negative. Negative ads sometimes work, but I think that uh, Hoosier voters 
seem to look at uh, Dick Luger as somebody who brings people together. And if it looks like that he's being negative and maybe uh, uh, tearing people apart, uh, so to speak, mm. then, then that could turn against him. Well, we'll just have to see. But I actually think if it's going to break late, that actually has an advantage for, for, for Dick Luger. All right. Well, listen, Michael, really appreciate you coming on the program tonight, sir. And uh, thanks again for your time. Well, thanks a lot, Cam.